You can also get it to run in Excel. So if you just type in Google search RefProp Excel add-in, you'll get directed to the NIST website page where you can go and click and then get the add-in. Okay, here's even a better one maybe. This one probably will download it for us. So you can see it's starting to download. If you download that, you click it, you open this file, and then you save it. When you do a save as, you want to put it uh, in a C drive, not with the downloads. Put it over with your program files. Now I want to go to uh, the C drive, my program files, and I want to find my mini ref prop, ref prop mini, and that's where I would save it. And you see I already have it saved there, so I don't want to replace it. But you would save that file right there. Okay, cancel this. Now the other thing is, um, they do have a lot of help. Okay, so if you go to this frequently asked questions file, um, it's pretty helpful. It's linked so that if you click on this, but they'll talk about reference states. We had a whole bunch of discussion of reference states. You can see what they say about the reference states, because if you change the reference states for enthalpy and entropy, it shifts all your values. So sometimes students will say, hey, I looked at this property data from this table in this textbook, and then property data for same carbon dioxide or, or methane in another table, and it, it looked completely off. Well, they started with a different reference state. Um, there's a lot to read, but if you come down to the near end of this, they'll have a link to the Excel, and then they tell you how to do all of that Excel. You could put this in MATLAB. You could put it in LabVIEW. You could put it in Python, and some seniors in senior design are doing it in Python this semester, okay? Because they're le they've learned Python in another class. C applications. Uh, I know they have it in Fortran as well. Okay. But if you go to the Excel, it begins a long section of how to do this. Okay. Um, it's just like that other software. It's all in the Visual Basic. You save this file, as I've shown you, to the pro to that section on your disk. And then you Follow these instructions by step one. You want to open that ref that ref prop Excel file that you just saved. Okay. And then you want to save it as an add-in. So what I've tried to do is guide you through this. Let's say do the first step. Go to that file that you loaded in the mini ref prop. Okay. Open it up and then save as a type. Excel at change this to this right here. Change it to Excel add in and then save it. Click save, right? Then step two go to File, Options, Trust Center, Trust Center Settings. Well, that's great. File, Options. When you open that up, Trust Center, okay, and that keeps going because I need to go to Trust Center Settings, the button at the bottom right which is down here at the bottom right. I've copied and pasted this to help you try to follow it. Then for step three, select trusted locations on the left, trusted locations, and then click on add a new location, and then go to that C program files mini ref prop and select that subfolder. Okay, so you wanna, here's your trust center, then Go to this locations, and uh, you want to add the new location right here, and then you do the browsing to find this location, and then shove it up, and it'll be added. Okay, so you would uh, hit uh, browse. You would find this. Here's the browse. Then you would find this. Okay, hit OK. Um, this is part of the browse right here to find it. You'd say, okay, fine. Then, then you hit OK. Click OK. You've done that. Now it's trusted. Now you go to File, Options, Add-ins. Back to File. Down here to Options. That'll open up. Then click on this button, Add-ins. 
Don't you feel a little bit like a monkey working a maze or a rat, a mouse working a maze to get this done? Excel add-ins, right down here, Excel add-ins. Click go. And then after you click go, let's continue on. You want to then hit browse. Now this is already the RefProt add-ins are already set up here, but you wouldn't see that. You would see selected gas tables and solver and thermo tables probably, but you wouldn't see RefProp add-ins. Okay, but you would hit browse to go find it. Then you would find this with the little red box right there, meaning that that was the add-in because that's the file type that you saved. You select it, hit OK, you come back here, and it's now been added. All right? They tell you, make sure and go back to that same file location so you know which one you're, you're adding. Select now the data tab and click on edit fields. You can select this ref prop, click on change source, navigate to, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I already did this. Okay. Now if you've done everything right and now it's added in, okay, now you can test it. For example, here, just go to a cell, type in something like density water in parentheses as a function of temperature and pressure if you leave the next thing blank it's going to assume SI units the temperature Kelvin the pressure megapascal okay and then it would kick back a density this is the number that it kicked back does that number look reasonable for water thousand kilograms per cubic meter yeah, it looks reasonable. Okay, then you can open up a brand new workbook, and if everything works well, then you can start calling the code and using it. So let's try this. Um, this this one is thing. One thing is this is that ref prop file that you 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 open it up and you start looking at it, and then you will save it as an add-in. Okay, but it has a lot of sheets. The first sheet is summary sheet. And so it just says, oh, this guy here at uh, Eric Lemon at uh, Boulder, Colorado, he's the one responsible, and you can write and thank him. And actually, he's the one you will respond to your emails if you send him emails. Here is some user information, and this is a very long spreadsheet, okay, here. And it's full of information, is it not? And so... It tells you you could put in E, molar E, SI, SI with C, blah, 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 blah. And uh, valid types of inputs, temperature pressure, temperature density, temperature enthalpy, temperature entropy, temperature, what is E? Oh, boy, is that exergy? I don't know. I have to take a look at it. T and E, or is that internal energy? Is that what they use for U? It's probably temperature and internal energy. Um so you have to get familiar with their syntax. And here is a nice useful table because they have a lot of properties. But let's say you're working in E for English. Temperature is degrees F. Pressure, PSIA. Density, pound mass per cubic foot. Then all these, vo volume is specific volume, cubic foot per pound mass. But that those are pretty easy. But when you come down and you keep going, okay, energy, BTUs per pound, that will be internal energy. Enthalpy, BTUs per pound. Specific heat, BTUs per pound, degree R. Entropy values, but then you keep going and they have uh, fugacity. They have chemical potential, activity coefficient. Um, uh, let's take a look at this, mass fractions. Pranel number, dimensionless, surface tension, pound force per, cube, per foot. So if you want to know the surface tension, kinematic viscosity in foot squared per second, heating values if they're applicable. Here's that isothermal compressibility. Uh, um, and there's that Joule-Thompson coefficient, degrees R for PSIA. All of these have units, don't they? And you really need to know what the units are. So that's a, a helpful section. And then you keep going across, and then they have 
Okay, you can call it with temperature, give it the fluid name, the input code, the option units, the option one for property one, and then property two. It's, you have to know how to call it correctly, right? So there you go. Here are some examples on the next sheet. And they uh, um, encourage you to check to see you have the latest version, everything's working good. You can do what, control alt F9. Here is the fluid nitrogen, 100 uh, Kelvin, megapascal. You can see how they calculate density. You can just click on the cell, see density, and then they call cell B10 for nitrogen. That's the name. Temperature and pressure. Cell F7. So F7, uh, where's F7? Right here. Molar SI. So they're units of molar SI. And then they're passing A13 for the temperature in Kelvin, B13 for megapascal and pressure. And they come back with that value in density in moles per liter. Moles per liter. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, properties that are evaluated on this sheet. Two-phase calculations, etc. And it's pretty complex. Now, some stuff is not up and running because they didn't give us the ammonia 50-50 mixture, blah, blah, blah. So this sheet is Excel for all of it, but the mini ref prop. And then check some, same thing. Like uh, they'll tell you, this is the molar mass of air. Well, they didn't give you air. So it just says, I don't know the value because it doesn't have the back, you know, the functions. But they do have R134A, and you could see that everything checks. Uh, the, it's a good... From, from the code and from NIST. This is evaluated from the code. This is just a hardwired value. And so those are thermal conductivity for nitrogen, boom. Um, and, but a lot of these don't make sense when you download it because they didn't give you the full suite of all the fluid properties. Okay. Well, with that, let's do this. Let's go back and continue walking through. Uh, this I found is their uh, their uh, user guide. It's a big PDF file. So if we want to, do I have it open? I believe I do have it open. Here it is. It's it's uh, 61 pages. If you could see that, and it's version nine. They keep updating it, and it just continues on. Uh, let me see if I could scroll down. Bunch of pages, but. Uh, one of the things that may be useful to you, other than reading all of this, is near the end they have uh, help with units, naming conventions, Excel spreadsheets. So this appendix, I think, is very, very useful starting on a page about 48. So if we go to jump to page 48, and we scroll through here, a lot of that's helpful. Okay, here's Appendix A, fluids. Now, they, they don't give you many of them, but if you pay the money, you can get a lot, right? And then, I wish it was a little further. Units. Here's, again, a summary of the units. Temperature, pressure, fugacity, Joule-Thompson coefficient, naming conventions. Excel, here's Excel. So this is this is kind of a, a short list I found to be helpful. It's like, this is what's available. So sometimes I'll copy and paste that and put it in an Excel file. And so I'll remember the syntax of, of typing in the name. And then here's an example, enthalpy of this mixture. And here's another very simple uh, little chunk. So it says, if, if you're an SI, temp Kelvin, megapascal, kilogram per cubic meter, kilojoules per kilogram, blah, 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 blah. If you're in English, degrees F, PSIA, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So, and a number of other examples.